Hare Krishna everyone, welcome back to Shravanam Diaries podcast. I'm your host Sulalita Devi Daisi and we are continuing to read The Science of Self-Realization, the book by His Divine Grace, Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. This is chapter 5, Practicing Yoga in the Modern Age, and the first section is called Super Consciousness. Introduction The goals of modern-day Western yoga enthusiasts enthusiasts are dwarfed by the achievements of India's ancient yogis, who, according to historical accounts, could become smaller than atoms and lighter than air, and who could travel unaided anywhere in the universe. Yet, even these super achievements, says Srila Prabhupada, are only a step forward. How the true pinnacle of human consciousness, superconsciousness, is obtainable here and now is disclosed by Srila Prabhupada in the following talk, given in 1967. Mm. Krishna consciousness is the highest yoga performance by trained devotional yogis. The yoga system as is stated in the standard yoga practice formula given by Lord Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita and as recommended in the Patanjali Yoga Discipline is different from the nowadays practiced Hatha Yoga as is generally understood in the Western countries. Real yoga practice means to control the senses, and after such control is established, to concentrate the mind on the Narayana form of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna. Lord Krishna is the original Absolute Personality, the Godhead, and all other Vishnu forms with four hands decorated with conch, lotus, club and wheel are plenary expansions of Krishna. In the Bhagavad Gita, it is recommended that we should meditate upon the form of the Lord. For practicing concentration of the mind, one has to sit down in a secluded place, sanctified by a sacred atmosphere, and the yogi should observe the rules and regulations of brahmacharya to live a life of strict self-restraint and celibacy. No one can practice yoga in a congested city, living a life of extravagance, including unrestricted sex indulgence and adultery of the tongue. We have already stated that yoga practice means controlling the senses, and the beginning of controlling the senses is to control the tongue. You cannot allow the tongue to take all kinds of forbidden food and drink, and at the same time improve in the practice of yoga. It is a very regrettable fact that many stray, unauthorized so-called yogis now come to the West and exploit the leaning of the people toward yoga. Such unauthorized yogis even dare to say publicly that one can indulge in drinking and at the same time practice meditation. 5000 years ago in the Bhagavad Gita dialogue, Lord Krishna recommended the yoga practice to his disciple Arjuna. But Arjuna flatly expressed his inability to follow the stringent rules and regulations of yoga. One should be practical in every field of activity. One should not waste his valuable time simply in practicing some gymnastic feats in the name of yoga. Real yoga is to search out the four-handed super-soul within one's heart and to see him perpetually in meditation. Such continued meditation is called samadhi. 
If, however, one wants to meditate upon something void or impersonal, it will require a very long time to achieve anything by yoga practice. We cannot concentrate our mind on something void or impersonal. Real yoga practice is to fix the mind on the person of the four-handed Narayana who dwells in everyone's heart. Sometimes it is said that by meditation one will understand that God is seated within one's heart always, even when one does not know it. God is seated within the heart of everyone. Not only is he seated in the heart of the human being, but he is also within the hearts of the cats and dogs. The Bhagavad Gita certifies this with the declaration that Ishvara, the supreme controller of the world, is seated in the heart of everyone. He is present not only in everyone's heart, but also within the atoms. No place is vacant. No place is without the presence of the Lord. The feature of the Lord by which He is present everywhere is called the Paramatma. Atma means the individual soul, and Paramatma means the individual supersoul. Both Atma and Paramatma are individual persons. The difference between them, however, is that Atma or soul is present only in one particular place, whereas Paramatma is present everywhere. In this connection, the example of the sun is very nice. An individual person may be situated in one place, but the sun, even though a specific individual entity, is present over the head of every individual person. In the Bhagavad Gita, this is very nicely explained. Therefore, even though the qualities of all entities including the Lord, are equal. The Super-Soul is different from the individual soul by quantity of expansion. The Lord, or Super-Soul, can expand himself into millions of different forms, while the individual soul cannot do so. <coughs> the Super-Soul being seated in everyone's heart can witness everyone's activities, past, present, and future, in everyone's heart. In the Upanishads, the Super Soul is said to be sitting within the individual soul, with the individual soul as a friend and witness. As a friend, he is always anxious to get the individual soul back home, back to Godhead. As a witness, he is the endower of all benedictions that result from the individual's actions. The Super Soul gives the individual soul all facility for achieving whatever he may desire. But he instructs his friend so that he may ultimately give up, give up all other engagements and simply surrender unto God for perpetual bliss and eternal life full of knowledge. This is the last instruction of the Bhagavad Gita, the most authorized and widely read book on all forms of yoga. The last word of the Bhagavad Gita, as stated above, is the last word in the matter of perfecting the yoga system. It is further stated in the Bhagavad Gita that a person who is always absorbed in Krishna consciousness is the topmost yogi. What is this Krishna consciousness? 
just as the individual soul is present by his consciousness throughout the whole body, so the super soul or Paramatma is present throughout the whole creation by his super consciousness. This super consciousness cannot be imitated by the individual soul who has a limited awareness. I can understand what is going on within my limited body, but I cannot feel what is going on in another's body. I am present all over my body by my consciousness, but I am not present in any other body by my consciousness. However, the Super Soul or Paramatma being present within everyone, situated everywhere, is conscious of every existence. The theory that the soul and the super soul are one is not acceptable, because the individual soul's consciousness cannot act in superconsciousness. This superconsciousness can only be achieved by dovetailing individual consciousness with the superconsciousness. And this dovetailing process is called surrender or Krishna consciousness. From the teachings of the Bhagavad Gita, we learn very clearly that Arjuna, in the beginning, did not want to fight with his relatives. But after understanding the Bhagavad Gita, when he dovetailed his consciousness with the superconsciousness of Krishna, his consciousness was Krishna consciousness. A person in full Krishna consciousness acts by the dictation of Krishna, and so Arjuna agreed to fight the battle of Kurukshetra. In the beginning of Krishna consciousness, this dictation of the Lord is received through the transparent medium of the spiritual master. When one is sufficiently trained and acts with submissive faith and love for Krishna, under the direction of the bona fide spiritual master, the dovetailing process becomes more firm and accurate. At this stage, Krishna dicta dictates from within. At this stage, Krishna dictates from within. From without, the devotee is helped by the spiritual master the bona fide representative of Krishna. And from within, the Lord helps the devotee as Chaitya Guru, being seated within the heart of everyone. Simply to understand that God is seated in everyone's heart is not perfection. One has to be acquainted with God from within and without, and thus act in Krishna consciousness. This is the highest perfectional stage for the human form of life, and the topmost stage in all yoga systems. For a perfect yogi, there are eight kinds of super achievements. First, one can become smaller than an atom, Second, one can become bigger than the mountain. Third, one can become lighter than the air. Fourth, one can become heavier than any metal. Fifth, one can achieve any material effect he likes. Create a planet, for example. Sixth, one can control others like the Lord can. Seven. One can freely travel anywhere within or beyond the universe. And eight, one can choose his own time and place of death and take rebirth wherever he may desire. But when one rises to the perfectional stage of receiving 
dictation from the Lord, one is above the stage of the material achievements above mentioned. The breathing exercise of the yoga system that is generally practiced is just the beginning of the system. Meditation on the Super Soul is just a step forward. Achievement of wonderful material success is also only a step forward. But to attain direct contact with the Super Soul and to take dictation from him is the highest perfectional stage. The breathing exercises and meditational practices of yoga are very difficult for this age. They were difficult even 5000 years ago, or else Arjuna would not have rejected the proposal of Krishna. This age of Kali is called a fallen age. At the present moment, people in general are short-living and very slow in understanding self-realization or spiritual life. They are mostly unfortunate and as such, if someone is a little bit interested in self-realization, he is misguided by so many frauds. The only actual way to realization of the perfect stage of yoga is to follow the principles of the Bhagavad Gita as they were practiced by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This is the simplest and highest perfection of yoga practice. Lord Chaitanya practically demonstrated Krishna Consciousness Yoga simply by chanting the holy names of Krishna, as they are mentioned in the Vedanta, the Srimad Bhagavatam, and many important Puranas. The largest number of Indians follow this yoga practice, and in the United States and other countries also, it is gradually growing in many cities. It is very easy and practical for this age, especially for those who are serious about success in yoga. No other process can be successful in this age. The meditational process is right, earnest was possible. Mm. The meditational process in right earnest was possible in the golden age, Satya Yuga, because the people at that time lived for a hundred thousand years on the average. In the present age, however, if you want success in practical yoga, take to the chanting of Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And feel for yourself how you are making progress. One should know for himself how much he is progressing in yoga practice. In Bhagavad Gita, this practice of Krishna consciousness is described as Raja Vidya, the king of all erudition. Raja Guhyam, the most confidential system of spiritual realization. Pavitram, the purest of all that is pure. Susukham, very happily performed. And Avyayam, inexhaustible. Those who have taken to this most sublime bhakti yoga system, this practice of devotional service, in transcendental love of Krishna can testify to how they are nicely enjoying its happy and easy execution. Happy and easy execution. Yoga means controlling the senses and bhakti yoga means purifying the senses. 
When the senses are purified, they are also automatically controlled. You cannot stop the activities of the senses by artificial means, but if you purify the senses, not only are they kept back from rubbish engagement, but also they become positively engaged in transcendental service to the Lord. Krishna consciousness is not manufactured by us through mental speculation. It is prescribed in the Bhagavad Gita, which says that when we think in Krishna, chant in Krishna, live in Krishna, eat in Krishna, talk in Krishna, hope in Krishna, and sustain in Krishna, we return to Krishna, without any doubt. And this is the substance of Krishna Consciousness. Jai. We have completed this section. Tomorrow we shall start the next section, which is called The Appearance of Lord Chaitanya. So, thank you so much for tuning in today. The link to this book is in the description. Check out our website, shravanamdiaries.com, and we shall see you tomorrow. Hare Krishna.